Hi everyone, let's take a look at the follow example using trigonometry. And again, it's an optimization example using trig. An isosceles triangle is two equal sides of length 25 centimeters. What is the maximum area? Step number one, draw a diagram. So in this case, your goal is to maximize the area of a triangle. So you can write down the word maximize and the area of a triangle is gonna be base times height divided by two. Now again, we're not gonna solve this using our normal method. We're gonna use trig. So what that means is when you look at this triangle, I can let this part be X. Again, this is gonna be height. Again, there's a triangle. Now since it's gonna be isosceles, this means 25 centimeters on the left and 25 centimeters on the right. Now you can write a let statement. Let, and you can say again, let angle theta be the angle of this triangle, H be the height, B be the base, and X be half the base. Again, what this means is the base would have been right here. And base equals to two times x, or you can rewrite this as x equal to base divided by two. So that's the first constraint. We're gonna go back to the maximizing statement. And this is gonna be x times h. So again, your goal is to maximize the area, which is x times h. Now again, if you go back to the equation of constraint, EOC, Think about Sokotoa. So sine theta equals to h divided by 25. Again, let's write this down. I'm gonna erase this line right there. So sine theta equals to h divided by 25. Or if you isolate the height, that's gonna be 25 times sine theta. Now, if you look at the adjacent over hypotenuse, that's gonna be cosine. So in this case, cosine theta, it's gonna be X divided by 25. And again, if you isolate for X, that's gonna be 25 times cosine theta. So again, when you're trying to optimize this using a trig approach, the key is not to express this only in terms of X or to express this only in terms of height, but the key is to express this only in terms of angle theta. So again, X is going to be 25 cosine theta. And height is going to be 25 sine theta, just like that. So let's zoom in for you a little bit here. So again, if I just clean this up a little bit, area is a function of angle theta. It's going to be 25 times 25, which is 625 times cosine theta times sine theta. Now again, there are many ways of taking the derivative, setting it to zero, solving for angle theta. You could use the double angle formula, by the way, which I'm not gonna show you at this moment. I'm just gonna go through the most basic method, which is basically the product rule. And again, what I am gonna do is attach 625 cosine theta as the first part and sine theta on its own. So again, when you think about the product rule, there are five steps here. So again, a prime of theta is take the derivative of the first, which is negative 625 times sine theta times copy the second part, sine theta, plus copy the first part, which is 625 cosine theta times the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. Now, look what happens. It's gonna set this to zero. So again, don't forget when you're optimizing, whether you're maximizing or minimizing, the same three steps. It's always taking the derivative, setting it to zero, solving for x. And in this case, x is really theta or angle theta. Now, look what happens. This is negative 625 times sine squared theta plus 625 times cos squared theta. Now, your goal is to solve for angle theta. And there are many ways of doing this. And here's one approach. Notice the sine square theta and cos square theta, and we're writing it in terms of only cos square theta. So what I'm trying to say is you can look at this 
and write 625 cos square of theta minus 625 sine square of theta is a common factor of 625 in brackets. That's going to be cos square of theta minus sine square of theta. And again, this is the double angle formula for cosine, right? And if you don't remember that, that is okay. All you have to do is look at sine square of theta and express this in terms of cos square of theta. So again, sine square of theta is one minus cos square of theta. So this equals to 625 times, and again, if you expand on this, that's cos square of theta minus one plus cos square of theta. If you collect like terms, this would give you zero, which equals to 625 times two cos square of theta minus one. Now notice you can divide both sides by 625, which I could have done in the steps from above, but it's okay. Everything is still working out. On the left-hand side, that's gonna be zero. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna copy two, cos square of theta minus one. And again, I'm gonna bring the negative one over and isolate for theta. Now, the opposite of multiplying by two is to divide by two. So half equals two cos square of theta. Don't forget the opposite of taking the square is to take the square root. So there are two cases here. And again, because we're going through a row problem, we understand angle theta, which is the restriction, should be an acute angle. So in this case, we can dismiss the negative case. So cos square theta, which becomes cos theta, is gonna be one divided by root two. And of course, you can use your calculator in radiant mode, or you can draw a diagram. You can draw the special triangle, by the way. I hope you still remember this. One, one, and root two. This is pi divided by four. So theta is gonna be pi divided by four. And again, you wanna be mindful, right? It is possible to have multiple answers. However, all the other answers will be dismissed will be omitted, will be rejected, right? Because if you think about all the other cases, so for example, if you draw the four different quadrants, C, A, S, T, and you think about all the cases, you have to omit what happens when theta is three pi divided by four, five pi divided by four, seven pi divided by four, and so on, right? And again, the reason is because we're doing a row problem and we recognize the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So the only angle that makes sense is gonna be pi divided by four. Now again, the question is asking what is the maximum area? So now we go back and we write down maximum area equals to, again, don't forget it was 625. Let's go back to the top. 625 times cosine theta times sine theta. So it's going to be 625 times cosine of pi divided by 4 times sine of pi divided by 4. And again, you can use the calculator in radiant mode. You can do mental math. This is 1 over 2. This is also 1 over 2. And when you work it out, let's round this to one decimal place. So 625 divided by two, or if you leave an exact form, which is also one decimal place, it's gonna be 312.5 centimeters squared. So of course, you can write down the final statement, and therefore, the maximum area is 312.5 centimeters squared. I hope this makes sense.